you very much. Good morning, everyone. Your Excellency, uh, Mr. Fozil Qaja, our Minister Delegate of Budget. Your Excellency, Albert Muchanga, AU Commissioner for Economic Tr Development, Trade, Industry, and Mining. Our dear friend, Mr. Ubaid Omran, CEO of Ithmar Capital. Excellencies, ministers, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Our sincere congratulations to Ithmar Capital and to its partners and to you all for the launching of this first, the African Sovereign Investors Forum, a highly timely and needed forum to really seize and capture Africa's promising opportunities, its agility, its developing co collaboration in a constantly changing world. This is a great opportunity to highlight the importance of sovereign investors in shaping the norms, in shaping the world, in leading energy transition, of course, and other critical sustainability issues. This forum is all the more relevant than in 2022, the short term and the long term are intertwined. We, governments, have to keep 30 years net zero targets alive while supporting our populations to finish the month in the face of volatile inflation. Sovereign investors are the only bridge between those two time dimensions. When we look at your assets under management, you, sovereign investors, are not passive actors affected by today's global mega trends. I will cite just a few. Energy transition and climate change, digitalization, technology and commercialization breakthroughs, in mobility, in space travel, in urbanization, etc., etc. In emerging markets, in Africa being a huge emerging market, with their significant demand growth potential, you are actively reshaping your domestic economies and therefore influencing these mega trends. Today, in light of the disruptions we have been witnessing in healthcare, in finance, in energy, and in geopolitics, you are the connecting tissue between short-term and long-term, between stable utility-like rates of returns and returns with a higher risk appetite. You have directed more capital, like more than 75% of capital to, towards infrastructure in OECD and European markets. And the vast majority of that is in greenfield projects. It is our role as governments to provide you with the right signals, the right regulatory frameworks, the right ESG frameworks, to reach that right balance of capital allocation that will unlock Africa's opportunities. Sustainability is usually understood in terms of environment, social impact, and governance, ESG. In 2022, some bankers, some financiers, want governments to add another S for security. In Morocco, we probably have today the most integrated ESSG you will find. The Kingdom of Morocco, let me spend a few uh, time, a couple of seconds on the E. As you know, the Kingdom of Morocco is committed to meeting the various challenges of the 21st century by making sustainable development a shared social project and a new development model under the enlightened leadership of His Majesty the King Mohammed VI, may God assist him. So despite 
our low responsibility in climate change, like other global South countries, Morocco was among the very first countries to revise its NDC to be aligned with the 1.5 degree scenario. The objective is to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by more than 45% versus what was projected to 2030. But the most important is that more than 18% of this target is an unconditional target. This plan is part of an integrated strategy for low carbon development by 2050. And here, there is no greenwashing. We have no other choice than transitioning to a green, sustainable economy. We have no other choice than to be in line with our social objectives of sustainability than to strengthen our resilience, our adaptation. We have no other choice than to safeguard environmental protection. Morocco also has an appointment with history. We were elected president of the United Nations Assembly for the Environment, and I see some of our friends who were with us in Nairobi, Kenya, in March during that election. This gives us a double responsibility towards our population, towards our continent, our partners, and the whole world. Finally, I would just like to finish on the issue around greenfield and brownfield infrastructure. In addition to new greenfield sustainable infrastructure, we need more investments in brownfields projects to maintain value. In energy infrastructure, we see and we will have more and more stranded assets. As we want to solve the 21st century challenges by using 19th century fuels and using an infrastructure that was built in the 20th century. As you are the bridge between long term and short term, you are also the bridge between those two worlds, government's policies and visions and improved returns on capital employed and long term profitability. You are the bridge between greenfield sustainable investments that will enable Africa and the global south to leapfrog to the 21st century and brownfield, at times stranded assets that could be monetized much better with the right governance. Because beyond capital, beyond funding, you also bring high levels of governance standards. We are constantly learning from lessons of the past and we are aware that we have to accelerate the execution of our ambitions. To do so, we need like-minded allies and long-term partners. In every transition, investing to maintain value is critical. Critical for building a sustainable ecosystem, be it for electrifying a whole economy, keeping gas assets for the transition, or converting downstream assets, and these are just examples. We have all these types of opportunities here. That is why I wish you a very fruitful forum and discussions. Thank you very much. Thank you.